What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we'll be diving into the Shattered Throne and going over an updated guide on how any Guardian can easily pull off solo flawless runs of this beautiful dungeon. This is by far one of the best activities in Destiny 2. It's filled with hidden treasures like Wish Eggs and the Wish Ender Quest. It offers unique and fun challenges in some absolutely beautiful and spooky arenas and rewards some of the best looking armor in the game. And for your first solo run of the Shattered Throne, you'll receive the Eternal Return Emblem. Now that all dungeons are on weekly rotation, the Shattered Throne has become a viable source for pinnacle rewards, but sometimes it's not so easy to rally a group of guardians. So we'll be breaking down how any guardian, new light or veteran, can easily solo flawless this dark and ominous dungeon. Before I get too ahead of myself, if you do end up enjoying today's video and find it helpful, then please be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated. In order to take on the challenge of the Shattered Throne, you will need to have access to the Forsaken Pack. New light guardians will need to unlock the Dreaming City, which is unlocked after earning what I believe is around 750,000 XP. Once pulling up the Dreaming City in your director, you'll find the Shattered Throne at the top left of your map. The Shattered Throne is broken into several sections, including an initial entranceway, a few mazes, and a few boss encounters. When it comes to builds and loadouts, I highly encourage bringing a sword to help navigate through some of these areas. I really like and suggest you using stasis builds with this dungeon, since you'll be facing off against taken enemies who like to teleport around the map. And honestly, stasis is a lot stronger than what many people give it credit for. And with some of the upcoming changes in Season 19, it will be even stronger. Running a stasis build will give you the ability to slow and freeze your enemies, making them more susceptible to damage and will make it much easier for you to manage many of these encounters. Solar and Void well-based builds are also very strong with this dungeon, as they offer benefits like Well of Life and Well of Tenacity. You'll need weapons capable of taking down snipers, but also aggressive in-your-face enemies. With that being said, weapons that come with Incandescent will be perfect here. If you have the Wish Ender Bow or Malfeasance, either one of these would make for great exotic options, since they both deal bonus damage to taken enemies. Gallarhorn, Trinity Ghoul, and Lament are also incredibly strong exotics with different areas of this dungeon. Once you've loaded into the Shattered Throne, you'll find yourself in the Labyrinth. It is here that you'll need to clear the first set of ads that you approach. Once these enemies are dead, a symbol will appear. These symbols represent an area within the Labyrinth that you'll need to go to and clear out the enemies that have now spawned. There are a total of seven areas in the Labyrinth. Clearing the enemies at each designated area will spawn a new symbol leading you to the next area within the Labyrinth until it finally leads you back to the starting area for the final symbol. You can use the rooftops here to have an easier time at navigating around the labyrinth, or you can utilize this nifty map to help get you through. As you progress through the different areas, you'll have random ads that spawn in, including snipers, so it will be in your best interest to take these guys out quickly. Utilizing sniper resistance mods will be incredibly important both in this area and the upcoming areas.
Once you've cleared out the enemies for the seventh symbol, you'll be in the hollowed grounds chamber where you'll be able to drop down and exit the labyrinth through the hole in the floor. This will lead you to the descent where you'll have to cross through the sniper alley and the ogre terrace. This is where you want to have a sniper, a scout rifle, or a bow equipped. Sniper resistance mods are extremely important here as one mod will reduce damage taken from enemies who are beyond 29 meters by 25%. Two mods will reduce that damage by 40%. I find it best to stick to either the left or the right side walls when making your way through the sniper alley so that you can use the ledges for cover. Running down the center lane puts you in a kill box that you just don't want to be in.
Once you've reached the ogre terrace, it's best to take this area slow. Pick off the ogres from a distance as you inch your way forward. It's tough enough to keep your footing in this room without ogres blasting you back. A sword can be a big benefit here. Once you've made it through the ogres, you'll find yourself in the first thrallway. While in this area, your movements are slowed and repressed. You'll have an endless rush of thrall coming out at you, but you'll need to ignore them as you run by and make your way out of this area. This is where having a stasis build will really come in handy, as will the use of a sword. You can still hop while you're in this area, which will increase your movement speed and make it easier for you to maneuver around these thrall. Melee resistance mods will help out big time. With one mod, you'll get a 25% reduction in damage taken from any enemy within 4 meters. And with two mods, you'll get a 40% reduction in that damage. Once you've dropped out of the thrallway, you'll need to cross through the cliff wall, which is on the left side of the map. Watch out for all the phalanxes as you make it into the courtyard, and then enter into the doors. This will lead you to Vorgith, the Boundless Hunger, first boss encounter of the Shattered Throne.
There's no rally banners here, so keep that in mind when changing your gear and your loadout. You'll want weapons for big boy damage against Vorgith, as well as a void weapon for the wizard shields. Those sniper resist mods that we spoke of earlier will come in handy again as there will be several taken vandals in this encounter. In order to defeat Vorgith, you'll need to bring down his shield, which can only be done by retrieving the four orbs from the four wizards that spawn in on each side of this room. Once defeating a wizard, an orb will drop, giving you a 45 second countdown. In this time, you need to make your way around the room either clockwise or counterclockwise to kill the other three wizards and collect their orbs. If your countdown runs out before you collect the next orb, you die, so you need to be quick. Once you've collected all four orbs, you'll have a buff that says Petitioner's Burden. You'll now be able to slam at one of the four podiums in the room. You cannot dunk at the same podium more than once. Once you've dunked at the podium, Vorgith's shields will come down and damage phase will begin. During damage phase, Vorgith will periodically blast void orbs that will come at you that you need to shoot down. You'll have a limited amount of time to damage Vorgith, so you will most likely have to do this in two or three phases. Once the damage phase has ran out, the wizards and their accompanying entourages will return, and you'll have to repeat the process of collecting the four wizards orbs once again.
Once Vorgith is down, a well-lit doorway will open up, leading you into the next area of the Shattered Throne. Pass by the statue of Sejur Ido and ascend into the climb. This is a pretty straightforward maze. Drop down to the bottom floor where the wizards are. Defeat them and then take the lift up. Continue to clear through enemies as you make your way up higher and higher until reaching the next throwaway area. This is where having a sword will come in handy because you'll have to cross through a very narrow pathway on the outside of the wall. This pathway is filled with taken wall boops and hobgoblins, so you'll need to be extremely careful as you cross. Once cleared, you'll be led to two final lifts that will take you to the Shattered Throne's final boss, Dol Inkaru, the Eternal Return. In this encounter, you'll have four things to worry about. Dull and Karu, the three big-ass knights that are guarding her, the scions that spawn in on the sides of the room, and the big crystal that Dull and Karu will spawn in on one of the four sides of this room at different points of this encounter. In order to take down Dull and Karu, you will need to defeat the three big knights and collect their three orbs, which will give you a damage buff, allowing you to damage Dull and Karu. But this can be a tricky challenge. When the encounter begins, Begins, the three knights will begin chasing you around this small area. After a few seconds, they'll fade away, only to reappear a few seconds later, typically behind you. And while they can look intimidating, these guys are big, dumb, and slow. But nevertheless, you should still avoid taking too many direct hits from these guys, which is why using melee resistance mods will become so vital. As the encounter starts, there will be two groups of Taken Scion that spawn in on the left and the right sides of the room. 
room. These guys can duplicate quickly, so you'll want to clear them out fast. I do generally like to keep one or two scions alive for as long as I can. This gives you a continuing source to proc perks like unrelenting, kill clip, or well and orb generation. Once starting the encounter, I'd find it best to play cat and mouse with the knights. Use the pillars and the center fountain as cover from Dull and Karu's blasts and just run circles around the knights as you weaken them. You'll need to defeat the three knights in quick succession to retrieve all three of their orbs, but timing will be your biggest obstacle. If you take too long to kill the three knights, you run the risk of them respawning. You'll need all three knights orbs to get the buff called Finite Thoughts. You'll need at times three of this buff, which you'll need to deal out enough damage against Dull and Karu. But after 90 seconds of the encounter starting, Dull and Karu will cast a shield over these three knights. And if their orbs are already exposed, those orbs will be shielded too. This will spawn a large crystal in the room that you'll need to break in order to finish taking down the knights. So because of this, I find it best to weaken the three knights evenly as much as you can before the first crystal is summoned. Take down the crystal and then defeat the three knights in rapid succession. Once the crystal is broken, another set of scions will spawn in, so you'll need to be prepared for that. Once you've taken down the three knights, you'll have the finite thoughts buff, and it should be at times three. Now, you can dish out all of your big boy damage against Dull and Karu, but for a limited time frame. This is where having Lament, Wither Horde, or a Galahorn can really be a big benefit. Otherwise, linear fusion rifles continue to excel in DPS right now, although that could be changing with Season 19. Before your finite thought buffs reach zero, you'll need to jump into the center fountain in order to cleanse, which will stop your damage phase, so you'll want to keep a close eye on that countdown. If you fail to take down Dole and Karu in the first damage phase, you'll have to break the newly formed crystal above her, which will spawn back in three knights and the sets of scions. You'll then need to repeat the process until defeating Dull and Karu. Once Dull and Karu is defeated, you will have officially completed the Shattered Throne dungeon and be instantly rewarded with your loot, including the Eternal Return Legendary Emblem, along with the personal accomplishment of being a legendary badass. And there you have it, Guardians, a complete updated guide on how anyone can easily solo the Shattered Throne dungeon in year five of Destiny 2. I wish you all the best of luck in your runs of the Shattered Throne. Let me know how they're going in the comments below. If you continue to have any issues with this dungeon or other activities in Destiny, then be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then please be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you're in need of any help throughout this season with a dungeon, raid, nightfall, or any of the new content, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of destiny and until next time guardians this has been profane wishing you all some happy hunting